go abroad and it's and it's difficult because I know that me just going in and seeing patients and maybe trying to get a diagnosis was like surface. A lot of other international rotations you get the opportunity to kind of jump into the system that's in place but not necessarily collaborate with other people and hear their sides of things. It's the partnership aspect of it. It's the, it's the fact that it's not um, it's not global health education with the perspective that we're trying to teach North American students about global health. It's that we're trying to teach students from around the world about the social determinants of health. The understanding of the other causes of disease apart from the biological ones. I think it is quite rare to have to be in a classroom with colleagues that are from the other side of the world and are based in the other side of the world still, to be able to have those dialogues about these issues, about what international trade means for poor countries, what's a sustainable health intervention, to be able to have that kind of dialogue with people coming from such different places, it's, just, it's, a, real, it's a real gift. Um, the idea for the social medicine course started a few years ago when during medical school I spent time here at Latour Hospital and felt that I was learning a lot of clinical medicine. But then we'd go back and you'd learn social medicine in the classroom back in the United yeah. States when really the two go side by side. I'll give an example of uh, a mother who came in with her malnourished child admitted to the nutrition unit. And here was a mother who had had three other children who had been affected by the same condition. Unfortunately, weather conditions was not good enough for her crops to grow. And what this meant was that she had no emergency, I would say, backup plan for food supply. His mother had the skills, had the knowledge, but because of her, her surrounding, she was unable to uh, give alternative, alternative sources of food that would be nutritious to this child, given her inability to breastfeed the child. We usually we start around 9 o'clock in the morning. We start in the classroom and just have a brief clinical case discussion related to a patient that we're going to see on the wards. And the idea is that it's just like sort of a typical way of learning clinical medicine talk about a little bit of the social factors in the patient's life. And then I would like to have them sort of form a differential diagnosis. And then we go to the wards and we see one or two patients. We've tried to encourage the students to ask questions about the patient's life, their clinical course, uh, and a lot more sort of social history kinds of questions. We also spend some time on the physical exam, picking out whether or a particular thing, whether we're gonna to listen to the lungs that day, listen to the heart, feel the abdomen, try to feel the spleen. And then we usually go back to the classroom, and at that point we do a little bit more of a clinical lecture on if the topic's tuberculosis. We talk about epidemiology of tuberculosis, risk factors, clinical presentation, treatment, so that the students are getting a standard set of clinical tools that they would need to you know, know in terms of diagnosing patients with these illnesses in settings like Northern Uganda. Before the war, um, we were known as the people with the best health. After live massacres and abductions, and people are coming back and expected to live through their normal life, when you just get into it, you just feel it, you just, um, you see the suffering and it's a place where people actually talk to you about actually seeing killings and it's also a place where you actually see people not getting enough health care because of all of that. Yeah. Having grown up in this area of the country and seeing the transition this part of the world is going through from conflict to people living in congested camps and people now going back to their homes. I see a lot of promise. In northern Uganda, um, you've had a lot of attempts at, at health interventions. So I think you can look, you can also, it gives an opportunity to look at these different kinds of interventions and see which, which makes sense in a place like this and really sustainably addressing health. The afternoons are spent, uh, usually we all have lunch together. And that's a chance for people to, uh, you know, with this kind of being a collaborative time, it's a chance for Ugandan students, the U.S. students, to get together, get to know each other more personally, uh, share what their lives are like. And, and then it's also a little bit of a break time. We usually reconvene uh, mid-afternoon and spend 
three or so hours uh, talking about a wide range of social medicine topics. Because of the history here with the war, with the history of colonialism, the history of, of development um, uh, interventions and humanitarian interventions, it really, it just, all of these, these diff different things come together in the society. We've brought in a lot of different speakers uh, from Uganda who are able to sort of share with us what it is they do how they do it, and a uh, chance for a lot of interactive discussion. And that's the whole idea behind social medicine, is that all this stuff that's happening in society, um, socially and economically, does play into health. I like the best the field visits. That was like my favorite part. <laughs> it was the moment where we sort of stepped out of the bus, not really knowing what to expect, and were greeted by people who were singing. Bobby Health Center, I was surprised. I didn't expect to see a lot of uh, people living with AIDS coming out in such a huge number. There you see um, what's happening on the ground, what's the effect of different uh, approaches to healthcare. I come away from this course very confident that I'm going to be um, working with a number of people in the future that really will change the world. I think a lot of medical students do international rotations and go and get the experience to see what things are like in other areas, but they don't necessarily delve into the, the deep-seated problems like this course does. I think it really pushes you to sort of challenge your own beliefs and to think a little more broadly about your, um, your beliefs and your goals and how to get there. You could benefit if you've had no international experience and you're really anxious to see what it would be like to deliver healthcare globally. Um, at the same token, I think having had um, experience in international settings, you would certainly benefit from this course. I think the course is for people from any country mm -hmm. um, and, and could be really useful experience for the whole globe of medical students. <laughs> <laughs>